He madring kila ma tulunga palamit ya daya modhadiko Maudyang na kaniva sinang bhaya pararva kya riva prartitaha Nili shambara nila mambara talang jambu palamaya yang Thang mun chan gir mambarang param rishan lambo darapatumam Namaste. <laughs> so welcome to the beginning of this new series, The Daily Sutra, where every day I'm going to post a short video explaining a very nice verse, a drop of nectar from the ocean of nectar in the scriptures. You know, I like to quote the scriptures. And the reason I do that is because I don't trust my mind. My mind, I've seen by experience, likes to misremember things and change them according to its own preferences. Well, that's not acceptable. So I have to keep an eye out on my mind and always go back to the scriptures and confirm anytime I get a realization or an insight. So this series is going to be from all over the place. We're not going to stick with any one source, but we're going to take quotes from all bona fide sources and then explain how they fit into the context of the esoteric teaching Dharma Sar. So let's look at today's drop of nectar. Many are they who chant the scriptures, but rare is he who is one with their spirit, forgetting that the divine truth is within themselves. They look for it in books, like the shepherd who searches for the goat in the well when it is already in the flock. Verbal knowledge is of no avail for the destruction of worldly delusion. Only the man of awakened intelligence can benefit from the Shastra. Without realized intelligence, prajna, one can only talk of the divine truth. So I wish I had a dollar or a rupee or something for every time I've heard someone quote the scriptures, but knowing them and seeing their activities and their consciousness, they're nowhere in the ballpark. I mean, they're just really off the wall. Isn't it? Haven't you seen this too? So what's the difference? There are people who have a lot of verbal intelligence. Vak. Uh, vak means speech. But you know the saying, words are cheap. So there are many people who are very learned in the scriptures who can quote chapter and verse and go on and on all day, uh, chanting or reading from the scriptures. But then when you look at their being, when you look at their actual life, they don't measure up. They haven't realized what's in the scriptures. They haven't become one with their purpose. So the purpose of the scriptures is to bring us to self-realization. If we're going on reading and studying and chanting and whatever, and we're not making any progress, if we're not changing our character, if we're not purifying our minds, if we still have to struggle with desires and stuff like that, then we need a different kind of intelligence. And this is called pragna. Gna means realized knowledge. Uh, not just ordinary verbal knowledge, that's vidya. And pra means practical, in the here and now, tangible. So pragna is a kind of intelligence that actually we're not encouraged to develop in our society. Instead, 
We're encouraged by school and culture and work and the marketplace in general to cultivate knowledge of the symbols, the words, instead of the things that they actually represent. The states of being, the states of consciousness that lead to enlightenment. So those without prajna can really never hope to understand the scriptures, though they may quote them day and night or chant from them with great facility. Uh, we've seen this. Like every year in Tiruvannamalai, actually around this time of year, they are holding a big sacrifice in the temple. And these great pandits come from centers of learning like Tanjavur and Kashi and all these different uh, big, big temples. And they chant many, many, many shlokas in very high sounding voices with great enthusiasm. And then if you go backstage and you see how they behave with each other, they're fighting, they're arguing, they're bickering. They look upon Westerners or anybody actually who's not in their cult as undesirable persons. You know, they don't bother to look beneath the surface of things. And this is true in every religion. It's not unique to the Vedic religion, <laughs> believe me. But uh, we have to know what is the cure for this? What is the medicine for this? And Shiva goes on to explain this. But there can be no direct realization of that truth without practical application. You may spend a thousand years hearing knowledge from the Shastra, but you will never reach their end. Endless is the expanse of the Shastra. Life's duration is but limited. Obstacles are legion. Wisdom is going straight to the essence of the scriptures, like a swan extracting milk from water. Study, know their essential truth, and then leave them aside like chaff after winnowing the grain. So there's a couple of metaphors here that I should probably explain. The essence of the scriptures is self-realization direct knowledge of the self, Brahman, consciousness. Not ordinary consciousness, but pure consciousness. Turiya, and what is beyond Turiya. But most people are content with verbal knowledge. That is very different from self-realization. And it will not give you the actual essence of the scriptures as long as you're still attached to it. So a swan has a very fine mesh in its mouth, in its beak. And this is for filtering out algae from water. That's a big part of its diet. So it can even drink milk that's mixed with water and then spit out the water and drink the milk. So in the same way, we have to use intelligent discrimination uh, to extract the essence of the scriptures, not just the details of the uh, philosophy and ontology and terminology and epistemology and the rituals and the procedures and the names and so on although that is a step on the way to understanding. But then to see, what are these things pointing at? What are they symbolic of? Like a finger pointing at the moon. Huh? If we get all attached to the finger and forget about the moon, what's the use of it? It doesn't get the point across. And neither do scriptures if they're just taken as verbal knowledge. Vidya. What we want is jnana. And the way to reach it is prajna, practical knowledge. And the jnana is the realized knowledge that we derive from that. 
There's one more simile here. When grain is grown in the field, you've probably seen pictures of uh, uh, grains of wheat or rice, and they're enclosed within a kind of, of carrier. And before the grain is useful, it has to be separated from the carrier. And this is done by beating or uh, having a horse or a cow walk around it or walk over it or by some machine. And this is called winnowing. And when the grain is winnowed, what's left over is called chaff. Chaff is generally useless, except maybe for composting. But it's certainly not edible, at least not for human beings. Maybe cows can eat it, you know, but they can digest anything. <laughs> but for human beings, we want the grain, not the chaff. And in spiritual life, we want the essence of the scriptures, not simply the verbal form and the formalities. So this takes a special kind of intelligence, and that intelligence is given by the guru. So one should approach a realized guru. Uh, the word Upanishad means come close and sit down. Don't be in a hurry but hear from the guru and come close and discuss back and forth. Uh, we've recently made a change here on the channel where we have a lot more interactive content. That means you can actually communicate with us and we can discuss back and forth and reach the answers to the questions that are keeping you from actual realization of the scriptures, which is complete enlightenment and self-realization. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.